Hey everybody, this is Alex Hayes with Meadow Park Church of God. Uh, I spent a good chunk of my day the other day trying to figure out how to hook up our ETC ION to um, Control Pro Presenter. And I finally figured it out near the end of the day. My background as a sound guy, I've taught myself everything I know about the ION, which is next to nothing when you think about what it can do. Um, but I wanted to share this in case there's some other guys out there that have been looking to do something like this, but it's struggling with a setup. If I can save you a whole day, great. Uh, by no means am I an expert. And if you've got questions, get a hold of me, and I'd be more than happy to help if I can. So let me show you what we're doing here. So here you're looking at Pro Presenter, And if I pull up my channel here, what I can do is advance through the playlists and uh, a couple other things from the console which I'll show you in a second. So here I can clear all backgrounds, right? And then um, I can navigate playlists. I can also navigate, um, so if you have hot folders for media, uh, it's not letting me do labels, so you'd have to make a playlist, but you can make playlists here, and then you can actually advance them from the console here. And the same thing, you can also, um, you can do audio as well, which isn't doing anything right now because we're, we're not big audio out of Pro Presenter people. Um, and then you can also advance the current playlist, which you can see up there, which is going. So I'm just going to kind of walk through how we did this and the, couple, the steps behind it. It's not super complicated once you kind of figure out what you're doing, but if you're like me and this is all brand new, it's a little overwhelming. Um, so what we're using is ArtNet. And so if you don't know, ArtNet is basically DMX over Cat5. Um, again, no mean, by no means am I an expert here, but basically what it, from my understanding, what it lets you do is in a bigger venue, you can use the DMX outputs on your console and feed a relay box or two or five, um, whether it be in your trust system in front of the stage. And it pat, and then from there the DMX goes out. So it, it, it's kind of like uh, if you're an audio guy, digital snakes. It sends a lot of information to one place, and then it distributes it from there, which just it makes everything smoother, and you don't have to worry about hitting your maximum fixture count or anything. So here I'm going to come into Pro Presenter and show you what we have to do inside of Pro Presenter to get this working. Um, preferences. I'm going to zoom in a little so everyone can see here. Right, so here's your preferences. So the thing that we're doing right now is we're demoing all the modules because we do not own this one yet. Pretty sure we're going to get this. I believe it's $299.99. Um, in theory, you could do this with the MIDI one as well, but from the reading I was doing on the ION, to, in order to do MIDI, you have to have a physical output from the back of the console, which means you also have to have a MIDI interface to decode it back into the computer. Um, doing it over ArtNet, since we're just trying it, um, I already have our console and computer on an internal network within the Sanctuary, like Sanctuary Tech network that's locked down. So both consoles, all of our computers are all in a network so they can talk to each other if they need to. I'm going to come over here to the communications menu. And so you can see I've already got this one hooked up. I'll make a, another one just so you can see. So I'm going to hit add device, DMX, and it's going to give you this menu. So here you can name it. And then from there, you can just kind of, I just left everything else at about the same. There's a couple advanced options that you can do. We'll zoom here so you can see a little bit. There's a couple advanced options you can do if you want to, but for the most part, I just left everything like it is. And I'll pull up the fixture I just made. So that's a dummy one. You hit save and it shows up. And then you would hit the, the um, red circle here to connect, and then it's theoretically connected. I want to get rid of that. So here, if I unconnect, you can see the settings on the one I'm using. So they're basically all stock settings, except for the name. So not super hard on this end, right? So I'm going to connect it again. So the only other thing to look at in here is uh, address stuff. So once you have this set up, you can come in here to DMX Setup, and it's going to show you each address for things that are coming across. By default, if you're trying this at home, you're going to notice that you're going from 0 to 12 or 11 or whatever, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. 
down the column, and then the base address will say zero. So what this allows you to do is um, change your start address. So basically in the console there's a fixture. Um, the ion C's pro presenter has a fixture, and you can control it just like any other smart fixture. So it takes up 11 channels, I believe, and you can put those anywhere. So if you're going to make it pro presenter your first fixture, you can leave this as is. As you can see, our fixture starts at three seven, channel 376, or address, sorry. Um, so it takes up 376 to 387. So I put 376 in here. Pro presenter automatically addresses all of this stuff to match that. And then that's all you got to do in there. So that's a really easy adjustment. But And I, I'll show you how that works on the ion now. All right, so coming over to the ion here, I've got my patch menu pulled up. So what I will do, we're bringing ProPresenter in on channel 75, and then everything else is done by itself. So if you look here, we're going to use 75. So here's our channel 75. So in order to assign this originally, you would hit type, which would be empty, and you would come into manufacturer, and you would go to renewed vision, ProPresenter, and then it asks you which version version 6 we're running version 6 so you would do that and then once you do that it'll come in here and show up as pro presenter and then you would come down here address and enter the starting address and because the console already has a um, profile for it it will automatically take as many as it needs so you can see over here off to the side we're sending it on addresses 376 to 387 so it needs approximately um, 11 address channels. The only other thing you need to do here is come down here to this interface section, click it, you'll get this, and then by default it should have probably um, SACN and DMX picked. Um, what you want to do is add ArtNet. So what you have to do every time you click is it'll automatically put whatever you click in the box. So I would click DMX ArtNet, enter, and it should, you can see over here, there's a plus now in the ArtNet column. And that basically tells us that these channels are going to get sent over ArtNet. So everything else is usually set up for SACN and DMX, and you can see the asterisks as I go through some of our other addresses. That's all you have to do from um, like the actual uh, software itself. There is one other setting that you do have to do, but you have to do that from the shell. So if, you, if you're newer to, uh, to get to the shell, you go to your um, I think they call it CIA. Come down here and instead of powering off, tell it to exit. And then here we're going to come out to the. Uh, coming out to the shell here. So I'm going to go into settings. Um, so we're going to go to network. So right up here in the top um, is your internal network information. So for this to work easily, I'd say put it on a network with your other stuff. So like I was telling you, we have an internal network. So that's just how I address it. And the console has its own IP address. So you come down here to output protocols. Right here is your... ArtNet bubble, which um, at least on ours by default was not checked. So you want to check it. We're using directed broadcast and then ArtNet start zero. So the ArtNet start zero. In the console itself, you have however many universes you have, right? In our case, we have universe one and universe two. So the way this is set up right now, ArtNet zero universe is the same as universe one in the console. So they're offset by one. In theory, you could set the start to universe one and they should match up. I was having a bunch of issues at the time. So I was trying to leave everything as default as possible. So there were less variables when I was trying to figure out the problem. So I left it like that. We're only using it for ProPresenter. See right here, you have allowed output addresses. I wrote a little box in. By default, it probably says like 1 to 10,000 or something. Um, I just took that out and put an allowance in for the 11 channels that we're using because that's all I need. And then obviously, if you wanted to add something else, you would come back. That is all you should have to 
do out here in terms of allowing it to work. And so with that, you want to go down to the bottom and click Accept. And then we're going to fire it back up as a primary. <clears throat> So here we are back in the software. So I'm going to come over here to my third workspace. Oh, it didn't, apparently it didn't save. I'm going to call it the moving light controls. And then I'm going to bring up channel 75, which is the channel that I set up as ProPresenter. So here you have moving light controls for this channel. Um, so what you're looking at here is your macro column is basically uh, like ProPresenter commands. So like here I can clear all, which is the same as the clear all button, and video clear, background clear, playlist stuff. So any of your actual commands there. You have a transition speed, transition type. You can adjust those here. And then you have library playlist and then video image playlist. So you can select the playlists here as well as um, audio clip playlist select. And then you have these little wheels at the bottom where you can click these up. Each value of one is a different slide. Um, so really touchy, not exactly applicable to just run live just because, but what you should, I haven't tried this yet, but what you should be able to do is throw adjustments from this into your queues. So what we're gonna use it for is, especially big events, whoever's running lyrics will run lyrics, and we're not running a stage display to the back right now, it's just a single slide. So we often have people from the front asking lyrics to be changed faster so they can know what's coming up since they're leading. Um, which then starts butt butting heads with lighting design and, and atmosphere uh, creation where um, ba slide backgrounds are firing before the change in the music. So we, the chorus comes up before they actually hit the chorus, and if that's where the band comes in, you kind of have this disjunct flow of energy, whereas if it was delayed, you have a nice clean transition. So you can have someone running... So the text in ProPresenter, and then when, when the ProPresenter sees the console queue, it pulls the background from the database, and therefore your background will come up with the lights, and it'll be a nice seamless transition. So that's what we're gonna use it for. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. If you need help with something, I'd be more than happy to help if that's possible. Good luck, and I hope this helps.